is being currently done in Armenia and, and Georgia uh, in the field of waste management, the role of the Nordic countries' assistance in this field, how to make the Nordic assistance programs uh, in waste management more and more efficient and useful for our countries. Overall, we have um, uh, still we have only the collection of waste, uh, municipal waste in the country. Uh, sorting is piloted uh, uh, in a couple of cities with uh, not very big success. Recently, we had um, uh, we had uh, introduced partial uh, sorting at source in the capital in Ye in Yerevan, uh, uh, partial in in a couple of districts. And the major, uh, still the major part of recyclables are collected from uh, municipal dumps uh, by scavengers. Uh, we are planning uh, a, a project uh, to pilot waste source separation in one city, uh, a program financed by Swedish uh, International uh, Development Agency, SIDA. Plus, uh, we will be developing, we'll be assisting uh, the government of Armenia to develop uh, legislation on uh, extended producer responsibility, which we should deliver by uh, 2024 with, with Swedish support. I, don't know I know I'm a moderator and I shouldn't uh, jump oh. in, but you know, uh, just one thing to add, there's also a growing interest in biological waste and what to do with biological waste. This is coming from the food security perspective and, and somewhat from the energy security perspective. Um, I want to uh, highlight a very important topic which uh, we are um, working now. Uh, this is uh, regional waste management practice. A replication um, from uh, Swedish experience. We have um, a very experienced international uh, group or from Sweden who is helping us uh, to one of our region. Uh, we decided that um, in addition to municipal waste management plan preparations, uh, which again CIDA was supporting it broadly, we have prepared for 22 municipalities, municipal waste management plan according to EU standards, but we are um, now we have shifted to regional um, waste management practice in Kaheti region, and uh, we have great success, um, cooperation of eight municipalities, etc. Another very important topic on which uh, is very active here is circular economy. Uh, we have already conducted eight uh, uh, international conferences on circular economy and the government of Georgia, particularly to support SIDA funded project um, uh, for a circular economy created intergovernmental um, uh, board. Uh, like to support uh, transition to circularity in Georgia. And I want uh, to like um, to pass special thanks to our like long, long standing partners uh, to um, government of Sweden, uh, to the um, uh, to the ambassador, uh, to SIDA um, director. Interesting idea um, was brought up by uh, our Swedish colleagues from the Lund University last year about the MBA solutions course. And I was very happy to see that it was an interesting uh, academic effort to improve knowledge uh, and exchange in between our countries and to bring Swedish experience in waste management and MBA solutions uh, to the larger communities. I'm one of the alumni of this program and I would recommend uh, everybody who is working with youth organizations, civil society, government, who, who people who are responsible for waste management to recommend this course for them. Another thing that we are doing uh, in collaboration with municip municipalities is uh, our uh, EU funded project on um, BSB Blexi Cooperation 1138 called Project, Anti-Littering Project. And there, with municipalities of Dirijan and Vanadzor, we have managed to promote the plastic the separate, uh, separate waste management practices. And we have provided the uh, municipalities with um, the plastic beans uh, collection points, and they are now managing themselves the plastic collection in those both cities. Government has to improve the regulation and make it a mandatory thing uh, to enshrine waste management, sustainable waste management principles. It has to be 
uh, formulated in, in uh, a very strict law, then this law has to work. We have legislation, but legislation is, is just a piece of paper until you uh, make it work with, I don't know, whether it is penalties or whether it is obligations of producers. People are actually quite concerned and quite ready to uh, become more responsible with their waste. But the, the thing they're lacking is the lack of infrastructure. So here where I see uh, personally you know, the perspective to grow and maybe assistance from uh, uh, Nordic partners more is the development of infrastructure and which is more like the, one of the most essential uh, points is training of the staff of the um, uh, municipal services and uh, the, um, all the waste management uh, staff who is involved in the collection, basically from the street, right? From like the street sweepers uh, till the top management of uh, waste management companies in the country. Uh, through our work uh, during the pilot project with UNDP, uh, we worked with municipal operators in Tbilisi and Batumi. And like on all levels, we saw lack of uh, knowledge. Uh, we have targeted about 1 million people and I can say that it's really tangible. International days for World Cleanup Days for Earth Days and so we have environmental calendars for Environment Day, Environment Day World Water Day. So we can see in cleanup action so many people are involved there starting from the government, from uh, regional governments, all government bodies, civil society organizations. So they're very much involved in communi and communities also. Also, we have conducted, as Maga mentioned, Maria mentioned, so thousands of meetings in the region, so and municipalities with community groups and NGOs and the self-government bodies. I will say that this um, the awareness is really raised, raised, and there is a demand for population to start the sorting and separation of waste and to start recycling. We have invented that the contest clean region, so we cannot imagine how many people, the whole country is participating in it. We have conducted for the sixth time of this year, and we are preparing for the seventh one. So there are nine nominations in this uh, competition. So this is clean region, clean municipality, clean village, clean city, clean borough, a beautiful street, beautiful balcony, clean uh, uh, yard of the organization, and, um, and, and of course, Blue Stream. So Blue Stream means this, uh, Blue Stream means this is a campaign for uh, for cleaning up the river beds from plastic. It's also very important. And so, so uh, starting from the state representatives to the civil society organizations, so everybody are involved there, just individuals also. So we have started a collaboration with, as I have mentioned, with uh, many business sector organizations, and of course, so also the free plastic zones we are established with, so and we need to establish free plastic zones in the country, in tourist, mostly in touristic areas. There are actually also eight settlements that are consolidated into two communities in Armenia that are fully uh, implementing waste sorting at source. We also have a program that is going to be that is implemented with the uh, support of the Japanese government, where Armavish City within this year is going to fill fully start waste sorting in the in the city. There are also over 40 recycling facilities in Armenia that not necessarily publish all the data, how much they recycle, but there is a lot of progress within the last few years. Uh, our organization itself, we work with over 600 uh, all level organizations, starting from the ministries up to all educational institutions where waste is also being separated at source and is directly directed towards recycling facilities across the country. There are also in Armenia several upcycling centers that uh, produce different types of products, including recycled paper and other materials that they recycle uh, in the facilities that are built. We also have uh, green councils in some communities that are helping the local self-government bodies to make green decisions and also helping them to integrate green solutions into their strategic development plans. I would like to ask uh, primarily our, our Nordic participants uh, to share briefly, of course, briefly uh, about the, uh, the Nordic waste management achievements. And especially, I want to uh, ask your opinions about 
what is applicable for the other countries and what is not. I think Georgia has to be very clever in the coming even decades because you have to use your own resources in the best way. We, the Swedes, and I suppose the Norwegians, we have a tendency sometimes to propose what we did ourselves. And we are kind of influenced by our experiences. And we may try, I hope we are trying all of us, but sometimes I doubt, to understand the conditions of the countries where we are working. But it's not easy. What can you learn from us? Well, you can learn that uh, we try to get rid of landfills. And we have done it very successfully, but at a high cost. We have introduced incineration. Incineration in a country like Sweden works very well, I would say. Uh, one of the reasons is that they have central heating, more or less everywhere, so we can use the heat. If you can't use the heat, I would say forget about incineration. The efficiency of making power is too low and the costs are still for us quite high. One of the other maybe more important things is about how to deal with the recyclables in the household waste. That is what you are standing in front of now. We quickly realized that we will not get very good systems running if we had not, we couldn't find new sources of financing. So that's when we introduced the extended producer responsibility to get the financing which doesn't come in through municipal uh, taxes. Now, Georgia, I know, and I heard Armenia is also planning to work with this. You have to put up good rules and then work with industry. It will be too difficult for the municipalities in this country. One of the lessons learned, uh, looking at it from a sort of overall national perspective, is that uh, we have had uh, the uh, extended producer responsibility since the middle of uh, the 90s. And that has meant a lot when it comes to collection of especially packaging, but also electric and electronic waste. Uh, and uh, of course, a um, whole lot of other waste streams like tires, uh, uh, cars, etc. At the same time, uh, there has been, from the beginning of uh, when the EPR uh, was introduced, there has been a conflict of interest between uh, the, the producers uh, and, and the EPR uh, actors and the municipalities, because they are discussing what kind of costs should be distributed to the um, through the municipalities and what we are paying as uh, inhabitants and what should be covered by the EPR uh, system. But having said that, I think that has been a major uh, sort of uh, part of the system uh, in terms of how much we are collecting and how much we are recycling, um, especially uh for all the epr waste streams so um what i think uh, could be a lesson learned is that when you when you have uh, sort of the opportunity of starting the epr systems um if there are ways of establishing collaboration uh sort of uh, how to meet, how to discuss, what to learn from each other, how to have interactions. So 
to establish meeting places to, dis to discuss what you actually have in common and how you can learn from each other. So, and in particularly, I think the question of design, designing of packaging, designing of products, how can the designers learn from the waste industry, from those who are actually doing the collection and recycling of the waste? Because uh, the sort of the key factor is that we are designing the products, we are designing uh, the packaging uh, to make it sort of feasible for recycling. And uh, I think also one interesting thing at the moment uh, that could be a lesson learned from the Scandinavian countries is the harmonized labeling system. The interesting thing about this labeling system is that it is it covers both the, um, the waste sector. Uh, it has been introduced more and more on waste bins and, and the recycling stations, etc. But also used by the producers. Uh, so like a symbol on the packaging, uh, there is a color code. Uh, and this is now also a discussion in the EU, as I, I, I think you are, are aware of. And they are also looking, what if this Scandinavian system could also be the basis for a European system? Lastly, I think uh, the question of how much you are actually able to recycle. That's a lesson learned from Norway. Because in Norway, we established a collection system very early. But at the same time, uh, we should have focused more on the real recycling, not only like we are collecting and we are using it for something good, but we are we want to have closed loops. We want to have more uh, to use uh, the recycled materials uh, in 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 uh, like in the building construction uh, sector, for instance. To add something about the EPR, I think it's a great motivation for the producers when they know that they need to, to kind of take it back to the cycle and to be their cost. It's a great motivation for them to, to design it in a way that it's easier to recycle. Like, for instance, for plastics, we have these sandwich uh, solutions with different kind of plastics put together, and it's, it's uh, practically impossible to, to recycle it because of that. Um, Another thing that I, I want to add is, is the need of information to, to the audience or to the, to the public um, for people to, to uh, be motivated to, to source sort. It's, it's very important to, uh, to share information and to, to share correct information because if, uh, if the population are informed that they should sort it in a certain way and then it will be recycled and then afterwards it gets known to them that it wasn't really recycled after all and that's very demotivating. I represent uh, Georgia Cleaners Guild, uh, Sadagi is shorter name, it's, uh, it means a working day. We are trying to solve the problem by the people. So Thomas mentioned that we do not have many resources and this is our own resources that we are putting in. So we are funding this organization ourselves. Firstly, we want to learn not to litter. And if you don't stop littering the streets and forests and valleys and rivers, you will never clean it up. And the second one is to clean up what we can. And um, this is uh, these cleanups are done by us, the members, but also by many volunteers and local communities, uh, schools, or just local people. We try to con everywhere we go, we connect uh, to the local people and try to do things with them so that they don't continue not littering. Our key uh, direction is really to unite people, unite people in cleaning up our own country. The biogas is a rather expensive thing to do, but we still have composting and we can do composting in various ways. And that doesn't have to be very expensive. Now we should just make them do it in a, as good as possible way. And we should also maybe try to think about, would it be possible to separate it? There are so many advantages if you separate food waste from the other household waste. 
uh, in a warm country, how often do you have to collect the waste? Well, the food waste very often, the other waste less often. So you can optimize the system a lot if you are separating this and you can get valuable material from it. The main problem uh, in this talk, I see that we don't have the recycle in the factory or whatever you call it. So, okay, we will pick all this garbage up, we will do and where to take them. So this is the huge issue, a huge problem in Georgia is of course, the waste uh, itself on the resorts, uh, on the rivers, on the beaches, in the woods and everywhere. It's, it's a horrible picture. So I don't see any policy from the government. I don't see that the community, the population are bothered uh, from this problem. And um, personally, I, I represent the um, Georgian Mountain Business Association. So, and now we started like um, uh, waste awareness, uh, like talk to businesses, how they uh, need to manage their waste. And uh, you know, we really need to intensify uh, talking uh, about this problem. And then probably the government will do anything at least because uh, yeah, it's it's really terrifying what's uh, currently happening in Georgia. It's not normal. Our next questions would be completely devoted to the role of uh, grassroots organizations and other non-governmental organizations. In the Armenian case that I am aware of, there are uh, commitments on the part of the government to make changes because Armenia uh, also has an agreement with the EU the SEPA agreement, which uh, aligns in many ways uh, Armenia's legislation, specifically on waste managers as well, uh, with EU legislation. Uh, government can learn a lot from grassroots initiatives, right? So if I could put my colleague, uh, Narine uh, Avetian, who I hope she's still with us, on the spot and say, ask, you know, I know that the Armenian government is doing uh, lots of things on legislative uh, improvements in waste management, but in your years of working with uh, uh, in this sector, uh, have you learned anything from grassroots initiatives? Have you engaged with civil society? Yes, of course, just uh, I can say, for example, just uh, for the uh, development of some regulations, development of the strategy, and development of the uh, draft laws, commitment to the waste management laws. And of course, uh, always we discuss with our uh, colleagues from the civil society. Uh, and of course, we use the recommendations which uh, we get from them. And even we have developed many regulations with our colleagues from civil societies and NGOs and other uh, academic uh, institutions. Uh, we have many examples for that, and the, which is very useful for the development of the policy in the waste management. We have started uh, finding little ambassadors in the communities and who wish to that recycling become true in Armenia. And we started to work with them. We started to co collect uh, recycling materials on the street. So uh, we were doing this each weekend on the street in different parts of the city and in the uh, different parts of the regions of Armenia. And we were organizing also trips to, the, uh, to, to see which kind of facility do they have. And we were recording them and putting on social media. There was no bridge between society and uh, those factories. Those factories were taking all recycling materials from the landfills. They were buying from there because there were uh, people who were like sorting them from the trash and selling those to the factory. So we created bridge between society and between those factories. And it, that's why it succeed. And uh, we have built the trust. Uh, people believe that if they are giving to us the uh, sorted uh, recycling materials, that is going to the factory. All the staff who is working with waste, uh, they should be trained all the time. They should learn what they do and why they do. We have seen in our experience that teaching um, like uh, from the school is very important as we have seen that kids 
can have influence in their parents. The role of civil society is innovate in innovation is 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 absolutely essential because the kinds of stuff civil society and grassroots organizations can experiment with, governments most likely will never be able to experiment or try or or kind of create that laboratory of new ideas and new solutions. On the other hand, I don't think, and, and my Nordic colleagues uh, would correct me, any of the Nordic countries had grassroots initiatives developing their waste management system. It was mostly a government institutional reform or change or introductions. Yes, government is engaged. I see uh, at various levels there have been good initiatives, but I believe in bottoms up in many ways. Uh, God give us uh, very good governments everywhere, but if, but there nothing will happen if people do not want to cause it. So uh, I will concentrate on people and uh, making it ourselves as much as we can. So it was uh, uh, youth organization, environmental NGOs, sort of pushing forward that we cannot continue just to, to throw away um, garbage and to throw away them in the landfills. So it was definitely a, a sort of pushing energy from the NGO sector. And then it was, uh, we have a sort of, when we tell this story in, in Norway, there were, there was one politician, his name was Torbjörn Benson. He came from the Labour Party and he's sort of the founding father of uh, uh, actually, in principle, a lot of the things we still do, as we can, we can, the origin was this politician. He was the minister for environment at that time. And he just, uh, and he said to the industry that if you don't do anything, I will sort of enforce it upon you. Um, and that was the starting of the EPR system. And that was also the start of uh, mandatory uh, sorting uh, for a lot of fractions at municipal level. So I think actually you need um, some, the, the sort of interaction between uh, the NGO sector and the politicians, uh, I think that's very important. But and I also think to engage the journalists, the media, uh, to sort of focus on what are we doing today that is actually not acceptable. Very little may happen if you don't have a civil society which is interested and people are busy, so it is the organizations that have to be there and uh, they played a very big role and in many cases they connected to waste when it comes to plastic bottles and so on we have a deposit refund system we wouldn't have had that if it people and with people i mean the NGO started to send a lot of bottles to our minister and been talking about this all the time and etc. So yeah, we need pressure. The fact was every 50% of the post to the minister for a period was cans and bottles. And they had to be registered and etc. Feel free to use our platform for sharing your views, ideas, proposals, criticisms. Uh, we would be happy to assist in this uh, very noble case of uh, uh, making our region cleaner. Again, thank you very much. And I wish you uh, all the best in your endeavors. Thank you very much, Alexander, for also leading all of this initiative, organizing it.